Hey, get Brock here. This is the uh, second of the Rider Faction's Shiri series showcase for the Outland series. Please don't kill me. I, I didn't mean to mess that up. You're all good, but you're all good, bro. I don't have any ammo. Oh, well, that changes a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore him. E Easy CDF, Rear Admiral. PTSD. All right. Uh, this is the, uh, the Midnight Oil. We're currently standing on, uh, well, I mean, I'll explain that in a second. You'll see this ship a lot in the series. This is one of the, the closest you can get to calling it a potentially hero ship for one of the factions. This guy's been through a lot of battles, and, uh, my rider boys over here are gonna walk you through it. Indeed. Akin, take it away with the Mark I, since this is your, ba this is your baby. Right. This ship isn't remotely at all close to the Mark III over there, which is our mainstay cruiser. The Mark I I built about a year and a half ago with a buddy of mine. It's, he built the basic framework for the bow, and I just went with it. As you can see, it didn't turn out the best. If you'd follow me, this ship, fun fact, originally wasn't named the Midnight Oil. It was originally named the Pub before the Discord channel was created. <laughs> But I was staying up well beyond 2 a.m., which is way past what I normally do. And I was talking to a buddy of mine and said, yeah, I can't sleep, so I'm just burning that midnight oil. And it clicked. It turns out the name fits perfectly symmetrically on the bow. Which there you go. <laughs> hits all the right buttons. The Mark I was given to me by a kin, and it's a good base. Like, there's a lot to work with there. But... It just need, she just needed a little TLC, so that's where I came in. I uh, rebuilt her from scratch, trying to keep as much of the hull, like as much of the character of the, of the hull as I could, and we got this nigh indestructible monster. To date, the Queen Providence class, which is what the Midnight Oil is, the Queen Providence class has seen major action in several battles, including against the Eternity, which um, I'm. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm very sorry about that. But you did attack first. Ma the durability of this vessel. It took on the Eternity more or less by itself and managed to survive for long enough to escape. Yeah, yeah. You want to take us around the ship? Talk about the design principles, guns, whatever. Sure. I'll, take, I'll handle the exterior. Akin can handle the interior. The first thing I did was I turned her uh, dorsal forward hull into a, an immensely thick heavy armor shield. This is the side that's going to get the most action. This is the side that's going to take the most punishment. This is also the side that's hardest to get through. Makes sense, right? Oh, yeah. If you come to the front of the ship, you'll notice there's a little pilot's cupola for the forward view screen. This may... Uh, and the control seat is, a, is well inset, so there's an immense amount of heavy armor and two layers of glass between you and the incoming fire. So it's going to take multiple hits to directly to the view screen in order to punch through and damage the control seat. <clears throat> so you've got a lot of work to do if you want to kill the oil. Yeah, no oil has been lost to date. Knock on wood. <laughs> she has three dual barrel 400 millimeters set up in super firing positions for fire long range fire support as well as two 220s and a 150 on each side set up to brawl with smaller ships yeah she's kind of um we don't have the battle cruiser class unlocked yet but uh this is essentially like a proto battle cruiser for this oh, series yeah. right oh now. sorry three three two two uh well technically four 220 missile turrets per side because there's one in the middle on the bottom in the place of a uh, 220 uh 400 millimeter and pretty and a little bit of point defense. Not too much, but she doesn't exactly need it. Yep. Want to take a tour inside? Show me around? Yes, indeed. Ken, yes. you're up. If you would please come over to the port airlock. Armory. Lockers. Standard lockers. You know, just for suits, weapons, whatever you might need on the, to go out for an away mission. I hear you're quite a fan of those. I've been uh, known to That's dabble. symmetrical on both sides. <laughs> This, this is the sort of hub that you're greeted with. This is where the crew tend to hang out after missions. You know, the, the usual, the, the bar that most of our ships are equipped with. 
critical, As probably the most important thing, aside from making sure graph generators are in a jail. <laughs> I don't condone don't any action taken by me nor my faction. This this is engineering, and excuse the gyro spam, I haven't quite gotten to the complete version fixed yet. She runs, if I remember right, two large reactors about... Wait, am I still coming through? Yeah, yeah, keep going. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, two large reactors, some small ones, a crap ton of batteries hidden somewhere in here. This thing has so many layers of armor, I can't even tell you. Even the crate uh, about is lost eight track hydrogen tanks. Them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you gotta... Honestly, you gotta the heavy sure armor probably alive. reproduces. Like, but, we don't know. Some days there are seven layers, some days there are eight. Yeah, uh, you know, every ship's got a soul. This is crew crew quarters. This is also like the airlocks mimicked on both sides. Four cryopods per side, three beds, kitchen downstairs. Seems uh, to be a new fad. Don't I, qu I don't know what that is. Yeah, don't question it. <laughs> I I didn't put that in there. Some some dude. I I forgot what his name was. I think it uh, starts with R and ends with Hodor. I don't. That's actually not my no. doing. Oh no. Someone, somebody showed up to the cantina one day and said, hey, I can put remote control systems on all your ships, and he did, and that's the color he chose. And we've been dealing I, with rampant AI issues ever since. Follow me through here. He's a Should ship that can headbutt a supernova, and the supernova is going to start crying. This this is the, the Central Information Center, or whatever CIC stands for. Combat close enough. We, we take it. Central Information Center. Yeah, close enough. This is where everyone yeah. cheats on their exams this, in here. This, yeah, this is for gunnery and captain's chair, which, you know, should the bridge ever get destroyed, we need to hit the, that, that big red button to the light of the main, to the left of the main screen uh, hits all the jump drives. Max distance. You see it? Right there. Okay. You know, well stocked with bar, bars, of course, all manner. <laughs> the briefing of room has a bar in it. <laughs> of course, you you gotta keep. You know, if we ever have guests, you gotta keep them happy. Yeah, I can imagine those stupid. briefings uh, go quite well. Yeah, that's pretty much it, really. That's the oil. Cool. She's. I don't think she's quite all she's cracked up to be. It's fairly simple. Just... Yeah, I mean, right now in the series, you're. Uh... The reputation is what we've got, and she's got quite the reputation, so who knows how long that's going to last, but for now, she's probably, honestly, the most iconic ship, aside from the Aventines, I think. Uh, she's like our version of the KV-2. A little stubby, but nigh indestructible, and terrifying to the enemy. Well, actually, the KV-2 is quite... Yeah, I'm not you say shut it, Rear Admiral. Alright, uh, Captain. any closing remarks, uh... From you guys on the ship any shout outs to uh, build you guys handle most of your stuff in-house so oh yeah all of yeah, almost all much. of our vessels have been done in-house yeah i'm yeah. just really thankful for rodor getting this ship to where it was because if we had to work with the mark one i don't think she would have survived this long yeah all right well i guess on that note hey thanks for watching those are some of the rider outland ships these aren't all of them, but they're some of the notable ones. If you enjoy this content, go ahead and take a visit down to the comment section and feed the Kraken that is the YouTube comment god algorithm. I also just enjoy seeing what you guys have to say, even if I don't respond to all of them. Finally, if you like what I do here, consider helping out with a tip over at Patreon. If not, hey, no worries. Just watching, commenting, and liking is more than enough for me. Thanks for watching.